This is okay. This part is no problem. Occupation is highlighted. Age and religion. It is. Why do we have so many people there? Last three rows, you come here. Presented to something hospital with blackish discoloration of skin. Now there's nothing like blackish discoloration of skin. It's actually the blackish discoloration from toes or foot or limb. Which would mean skin only. But we don't specifically say only skin. How do we know? And it's not black discoloration. Because it's not exactly black. So we call it blackish. Is that clear? That's a term which I was watching. Uh, so that is for seven months. Pain in both legs or lower limbs. So pain in both lower limbs, not just the legs. So we only, only the legs. So it will be legs specifically. Fine. This is okay. Blackish discoloration of not again. No, it's always a foot, never just the skin, mm. because you can have skin plus soft tissue which is blackish. Mm as you would see in your picture. It's not just the skin which is blackish. Initially involved only the toes, gradually progressed to involve both feet up to the ankles, that's fine. Preceded by blue discoloration of toes lasting for two days, that's correct. Why did you write blue discoloration? You get my point? So naturally it is blackish, bluish, reddish. It is uh, associated with dry and shriveled skin and numbness over the affected part, that's perfectly okay. Pain in both legs started five months ago. Now here the pain that we are interested in is one that is related to ischemia of the limb. Basically that's the whole story. And the ischemic limb has a pain which is typical. A chronic limb ischemia produces pain like claudication. And uh, we know what is claudication. What is claudication? Painful limping, okay? Somebody who can make it better? Intermittent pain. So it's a pain that appears on exertion, disappears on rest. If it dis doesn't disappear on rest, it is not claudication. It's just slow that when you come. That's claudication, named after King Claudius, who used to limp. That is the Roman emperor. Now, if you know what is claudication, it can be used in many places, not just the limb. Abdominal claudication for mesenteric artery thrombosis. There the pain appears after taking meals, which is also exertion for the gut. So postprandial, post walking and exertion related would be claudication. So don't be casual about this pain here. The severe and intentionally relieved of medication. So, all right, there is no claudication. And you can mention here, there is no claudication, patient has rest pain. What is rest pain due to and what is claudication due to? Muscle claudication after the muscle are No. And no wine guesses here. Certainly not with me. Answer is precise. Now remember and understand, and forever we will keep it with you. One, when there is ischemia, the muscle is deprived of oxygen. When it is deprived of oxygen, there is an aerobic system in place. It produces acidotic products which are called P substances or pain substances and that is the cause of pain. Therefore, any time of the day, if somebody can squeeze your calves, there is no greater feeling because you are relieved. That P substance is washed out. And if you are clever and if you are really conscious of where you are and if you are aware, then as this is done, you feel some kind of a thirst in your chest because the blood column is pushed up. And what has happened actually, the muscle has been squeezed off the pea substance and the pain is relieved. Am I clear? Yes. Therefore, as the patient walks, as the individual walks, and if there is reduced blood supply to catch up for that exertion by the muscle, so there is a relative ischemia. 
which is relieved on rest. The pain comes, goes, comes, goes, it goes on. And the distance you can walk without that pain is called claudication distance. Hmm. Now if the disease is becoming worse, the distance is reducing. Hmm. So you'll have to take the history of claudication distance. Patient would say, I could walk two miles without pain, now I can walk 500 meters without pain. Which means the claudication distance is shortening, hmm. but the disease is worse. Is that clear? Yes. Loud yes, no hand to take. Yes, sir. Loud, uh, yes. yes, sir. That's better. Then comes the question of persistent pain. Even when the patient is resting, that has got nothing to do with muscles. It's neuropathy. neuropathy. That is due to nerves. Hmm. There comes a stage hmm. when nerves don't get their supply hmm. and it's a cry of dying nerves. Hmm. Am I clear? Initially, ischemic muscles, pain, relief, then nerves. And when nerves don't get their supply, they will cause pain throughout. Mm -hmm. And how would it be different? The pain would not be relieved on taking rest. Yes. Yes, so rest pain is due to nerves. Mm -hmm. And claudication is due to vessels. Yes. So that's it. There is a history of rest pain and there is no history of claudication. That's what you are going to say. If there is no history of claudication and if there is a history of rest pain, you must ask the patient was any time there was a history of claudication. <laughs> Rather than any similar complaints, he doesn't know what his complaints are. And the similar complaint business is very annoying. Because we always say patient and there is no similar complaint in the past. And what does the patient have? He has oral cancer. How would he have a similar complaint to this? Actually, when you run out of words and statements and ideas, you just put that. No similar complaints in the family, no similar complaints in the country, no similar complaints anywhere else. Why this complaint we don't know. Getting my point? So therefore, be specific and the statement has to be clearly made. Now, we're coming back to the point. Rest pain would be a feature of a very delayed Delay ischemia. So, is there any history of claudication in the past? That is to be asked. That is to be asked. I am not saying it has to be there. Maybe it was not noticed. He did not have so much pain. Maybe the pain was variable and managing manageable. So, it is possible. So, I actually think that history is important. No history of fever, swelling of legs, ulceration. Trauma, pain, pallor, or exposure to cold. This is looking fine. Redness, itching, or burning sensation of skin around superficial veins. Transient blackouts or loss in consciousness. Good. This is to rule out embolic phenomena. And the previous one is to rule out Raynaud's. And the other one is to rule out very cold vein related issues. So that's okay. Venous, arterial, neurological, all three. Transient blackouts, chest pain, MI. They're all related to embolic phenomena. Weakness or paresthesia and upper limb abdominal pain. Now abdominal pain is important. But this is not specific here. I already told you what would you ask. No history of abdominal claudication. So you get a specific statement, specific answer and you make a specific point. That is, was there any other site where there is a blockage in the vessels. No case of type 2 diabetes is not a past history. We notice it every time. She's got away by saying he's a known case, so that's okay. But the heading is wrong. If somebody is a known case that he's known today, he was known yesterday, and be known tomorrow. So mm. that's not past history. It's past, mm. present, and future. Potential. All three. That's the trouble with diabetes. And no history of similar complaints in the past. What do you want him to have in the past? Not be careful. Don't use these statements. You could do without one line here. <coughs> this line is adding nothing. And you also know it. But you just asked. What would it add? It will not make any sense. 
Because he doesn't know what is his complaint in the first place. He doesn't know his problem. So how does he tell you? Maybe you can ask, no history of pain in the legs in the past, no history of disease related to vessels in the past, no history of surgery for that, etc. etc. Personal history is perfect. And I'm not adding anything. That's what you need to know. How much do you take? What tobacco, alcohol, etc. Don't you don't have to talk in the class, sorry, two of you. No talking. If you talk in my class, you can be easily outside, absolutely no problem. I teach two people also, but no talking. I don't like I get distracted and I get disturbed. No history of simple of similar complaints in the family. Okay. What do you want to ask actually in the family history? Yes. Go on. Vasculitis, collagen-related disorders. Mm. I just take this call. It's from outside. 